Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there was a man called George, and he was working on his allotment when the local priest passed by. How marvellous your allotment is looking today, thanks to the hard work put in by you and the good Lord, says the priest. Why, thank you, Father, replies George, but you should have seen the state it was in when the good Lord alone was working on it. Okay, we're not going to talk about the existence of God. We're going to assume God doesn't exist. Thank you for that concession. Um, <laughs> how I love the opportunities for jokes and humour the church gives us. Okay, I'm arguing on his side now. From the vicar of Dibley to Father Ted. How do we do without these, these, uh, these, this humour? And you'll be relieved to hear, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm not actually going to indulge myself and yourselves in describing in lurid detail the wrongs committed by the church down the centuries. The support for dictatorships like Franco, Mussolini and Hitler. The suppression of enlightenment thinking and freedom of thought. The torture and murder of thinkers and heretics. The Inquisition, its historic anti-Semitism, its misogyny, injustice and discrimination against women. I'm not going to talk about all these things. I'm not going to talk about its commitment to the bullying and hatred of gay people, its historic justification of slavery and its support for the slave trade and imperialism, the rape and abuse of children in their care, uh, the subsequent institutional attempt to cover this all up and protect guilty priests from prosecution, the incitement to murder by the bishops, priests and nuns in Rwanda, the banning of condoms and contraceptions. Now, I'm not going to talk about all that. <laughs> What is more, as a humanist, I'm happy to acknowledge the good done by the church, especially by individual Catholics who are moved by the best of Catholicism. I admire the food bank operated by Liam over there uh, at, in, at the Holy Name, and indeed individual Catholics did things like rescue Jews and hit them from the Holocaust. But I'm not aware that the church as an institution did that, and it's the church as an institution that is the subject of the motion tonight. Point of information. Well, can you give it afterwards when, when, you, when you're speaking? <laughs> the church as an institution is involved in international aid and health provision, but there are plenty of secular organisations in the field because care of our neighbour is not just a Christian idea, it's a fundamentally human one, and it derives from the golden rule, a fundamentally human value that predates religion. And it's easy to imagine a world without religion, where, for instance, instead of KFOD, there was Humanists for a Better World or something as a, a leading uh, charity. But tonight, I just want to focus on five issues, fundamental issues, that actually apply to all religion, not just Catholicism, which I say tip the balance against the motion tonight. And these are, firstly, the promotion of error, the unevidenced claim of the existence of a God, the claim that spirituality exists in a transcendental way as opposed to human spirituality. And these claims, I say, mislead huge numbers of people throughout the world. And this is before we even start on the many evils that I was not mentioning a few minutes ago. And closely related to this is the giving of false and unsubstantiated hopes, telling people there's a chance of salvation and an afterlife where they will be rewarded after the sufferings of this world. That's Marx's opium of the people. And that unevidenced hope leads some Christians to a spirit of acceptance and resignation and fails to encourage them to fight for justice in this world. And thirdly, child abuse by indoctrination. The teaching of children in one tradition only. As if other belief traditions had no value or were obviously wrong. Children are very impressionable and easily pick up prejudices of this nature. Indeed, this appears to be, have been a well-known Jesuit strategy. Sorry that Father Tim is near. Unless, um, unless children are intellectually critical, uh, like no doubt yourselves are, they may keep these false ideas. And I say children have the right not to be abused in this way. Children need to be introduced to the widest range of beliefs in the world so that they can understand and respect them as far as they are worthy of respect. When you have a when it's your turn, mate, otherwise I'm going to lose the time, aren't I? Um, so I say that uh, they, they have to be equipped to navigate their way through this diverse world and have a genuine chance to find their own beliefs. Fourthly, the waste of time. 
the amount of time wasted on prayer, ritual worship and praise to an imaginary God is a scandal. I'm glad they've conceded there is no God. Um, it's a scandal then to waste all that time. It can perhaps have a value as a community activity, but there can be other community activities more beneficial than uh, indulging in this kind of waste of time. And finally, well, I just five, I'm just choosing, but finally, church privilege, especially in taxation. Why should non-Catholic taxpayers subsidize the activities of people who like to display images of a man being tortured and who believe in the eccentric, to put it in its kindness, idea that a priest can turn the bread and, bread and wine into the uh, body and blood of Christ? Why should non-believers subsidize the activities of any religious education? We don't subsidize music lovers, ramblers, philosophers, fishing or stamp collectors. Why should we you know, uh, subsidize these rather eccentric activities? If subsidies to which religion were withdrawn, I say that the UK would probably be able to wipe out the deficit that we're, we've heard so much about in the last day or two. And so we could then, if we had wiped it out, we could then reverse those damaging welfare cuts uh, in public benefits, uh, uh, public benefits and, and welfare services that we are currently suffering. And actually, it's those cuts in welfare benefits that necessitate things like the food bank in the first place. So it's like um, it's, it's like it's like a it's like a burglar who's in court and who's being sentenced for burglary. And uh, he's sentenced, and then he says, well, I, I was very nice to my mother. Yeah, yes, okay, you were, but you burgled somebody's house. That's the feeling I have with the church. They're leading us all down the garden path, and then they're saying, oh, well, we've got this food bank. So I ask you to reject the motion. Thank you.